One interesting training idea is that an isometric contraction, i.e. when your muscles are working but not changing length, can be used as a tool for building muscle. Oh yeah. I'm gonna science a spam out of this one. My name is James Contraction. This is the Shredded Squeeze Science. Winter is coming. Harder, 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 harder. Hodor was not only a selfless hero, but his muscles were also isometrically contracting as he was holding the door, in this case from White Walkers. Now my only criticism is, I don't think Hodor trained hard enough for his impending duty. That was a joke, that was a joke. I'm a fan too, I am one of you. Okay, I deserve that, let's move on. Resistance training can be carried out with three distinct types of muscle actions, concentric, eccentric, and isometric. Concentric actions occur when a muscle produces force as it shortens. Eccentric actions occur when a muscle produces force as it forcibly elongates. And isometric actions occur when a muscle produces force without a change in its length. An eccentric contraction, the lengthening of a muscle has the greatest force potential, then an isometric contraction, and then the concentric actually has the least force potential out of the three. Isometric contractions have the potential of this high force output, which can help to recruit more motor units. And most certainly when I say dynamic contractions are vital for muscle building, I mean a eccentric and concentric contraction movement. That is a dynamic contraction. However, an isometric contraction may have a place in your training as a muscle building tool. And for any question like this, again, we need to go to the spectrum. I feel like I need a dramatic X factor sound there. Epic sound effects. I would love to do an X factor of fitness YouTubers but I want this guy with me. And so in terms of a spectrum, you have to think of your characteristics and place yourself on that spectrum when you look at questions like this. The more advanced you are, experienced in the gym, the more you may think of introducing something like isometric holds. However, for a beginner, this really isn't something you need to concern yourself at all with. If you are natural, Again, the more tools of muscle hypertrophy you may want to integrate into your training, the more experienced you become as them gains become harder to achieve. And so these are the sorts of issues I mean when I say place yourself on a spectrum when you approach questions such as this. And so first off, please let me know down below if you use isometrics for muscle growth and if you do, how you use them, your exact protocols. This is how I use them. And women are gonna swoon and chip over their feet. Clumsy. Is this right, Elliot? Are you digging this, ladies? Or do I need to squeeze harder? Are you tripping over your feet yet? Oh, those isometric chat up lines. Oh, those isometric chat up lines. And so traditionally, when we look at isometrics in training, the application is towards strength protocols. Isometrics for strengthening your joints at certain angles. For example, in a major compound movement, such as a squat, there may be a weakness in your squat and therefore you can train isometrics at that angle to strengthen that angle. That can relate to you, for example, overcoming sticking points in the strength curve. If you don't know what strength curves are, I have videos on that. And therefore the application of isometric work as an accessory to strength training work is most certainly established. And there's also an application of isometric work to rehabilitation. I want to play a game. Isometric contractions are regularly used in rehabilitation programs and during specific training phases where dynamic contractions may be contraindicated. Tendon health and stiffness is another quality of isometric training, which can have a knock-on effect to helping support your new muscular frame, you buff boss, and helping you with your functional capacity and movements as you are working with your continued resistance training. And so in this video, I'm unofficially collaborating with bodybuilding.com and bb.com have many contributors. Some are very good, some are just straight stepani. Now I may be wrong, but I think bodybuilding.com want my input on this video. And so this video is from 2016. I am a little slow to the uptake. Is Vince G still a thing? And so this guy actually performs isometric sets where he will have a working set and then performs isometrics without any resistance by squeezing his hands together. Now, if you want to include isometrics, there are some valid applications for muscle growth, as I will explain. I'm not saying don't do this, but don't do this. There are many ways you can perform isometric movements as part of your training without becoming a meme. 
And so firstly, we have to understand that there are different types of isometric protocols. To be clear, this video is about isometrics in relation to muscle growth. And just in a nutshell, the research into this is not overwhelmingly significant for isometrics leading to muscle growth. However, we do have developing and emerging research which suggests that there may be some applications for certain types of isometrics to help with muscle growth. However, isometrics do not replace your dynamic contractions in your workouts. They are something that you may add. They're not overly significant. They're not a necessity. They're not compulsory. But of course, you can use some. And here is how. Hold on a minute. Rather than me explain it, let's refer to a Jeff. You have yielding isometrics, which are basically when you hold uh, a position, and you're trying to resist the elongation of that muscle, okay? Or the lowering of that muscle. If it's a side lateral raise, lower it down. Number two is an overcoming isometric, where you set this thing way high. Okay, to something I can't move, and I'm trying to move the immovable. Okay, so I'm trying to pull out as hard as I possibly can up against it. So we have overcoming isometrics, that's what she said, and yielding isometrics, which is a really boring name. And so you can think of overcoming isometrics as someone who is not King Arthur trying to pull the sword out of the stone. With max duration isometric exercises, you're pushing, pulling, or holding a submaximal load for as long as possible, going to muscle failure. For maximum effect, you want to use sets ranging from 20 to 60 seconds in length. With this method, you can use both overcoming isometrics and yielding. However, I find yielding isometrics, holding a weight, to be much superior when it comes to max duration isometric training. In this case, a load of 50 to 80 percent for a duration of 20 to 60 seconds. And so as you can instantly see, there are different forms of isometric work. And the instant benefit to this is by having different protocols you can program in different ways. And this can be exciting when you program. This could help with your adherence and excitement towards your training. And then we have an interlinked concept, which is the isometric hold, where for example, if you're performing a regular repetition, that during the concentric phase, you may squeeze for a few seconds at the end of that movement. Again, that would be an isometric hold. That is a perfectly acceptable protocol to include into your hypertrophy training. And again, we can look to the factors of muscle growth, such as metabolic stress, mechanical tension, muscle damage, and we can think of this tension and force production, which activates motor units and muscle fibers. And if you're overloading, then you do have the potential for muscle growth. And so absolutely, whilst isometrics are not the key for muscle building, they may be a tool that you can introduce and there is validity to it. And so as Mr. Cavalier states, tension, of course, is a key factor in muscle growth, tension when you're trying to overcome resistance. They belong in your complete training program. We have new systems systematic review or oh, systematic review, which can help to enlighten us on the application of isometrics to muscle hypertrophy. Now, remember when we discuss research, it is a contribution. It is not set in stone. The systematic review I'm going to project to you is not something that you should live and die by with any evidence-based information. You should look at the guidelines given and customize them to you. I want you to absorb the information, but I don't want you to build a brick house around it. And so this piece of research was so in-depth, it had many tangents, so many talking points, I cannot communicate it all to you, but I've referenced it down below if you want to read it. So I'm, what I'm going to do is concise it with the main points to you. And in addition, while I'm there, just for that one person that's going to comment, of course, I cannot address every concept related to isometric training in one video. And trust me when I say, I do not expect anyone to watch me for several hours that would most certainly send you into state of catabolism. So this is Dr. Brad Schoenfeld's analysis of this research when he read it. Evidence indicates that training at long muscle lengths is important to muscle building. The findings of this review raise the possibility that including some targeted loaded isometric holds at long muscle lengths may enhance growth. And so range of motion matters here. Long muscle lengths refers to performing these isometric contractions when the muscle targeted is at a longer state. For example, Kubo 2006, which was one piece of research looked at within this systematic review where they tested knee extension and where the quadriceps, which were the focus of this work, were at a greater length 
when under isometric load, the effect was greater. The shorter muscle length being at 50 degrees, the longer muscle length being at 100 degrees in this specific piece of research. And so that's a very important factor you may think of if you choose to include some isometrics into your sessions. What is your muscle length when you are performing these isometrics? And so instantly the mad scientists amongst you may now start thinking about other fitness concepts related to longer muscle lengths and range of motion. You may think about something such as PNF stretching or eccentric loading, which are other fitness concepts which have some application and relatability. I don't know if relatability is a word, but there goes to the idea of longer muscle lengths with isometric contractions, the idea of working your muscles when they are elongated which may have an application to muscle hypertrophy. And we can theoretically think about this in relation to motor units. We know that range of motion, using a great range of motion, can recruit more motor units and muscle fibers. And after all, if we're working more muscle fibers, we have the potential for further muscle adaptation. All three studies found that isometric training at long muscle lengths was superior to equal volumes of training at short muscle lengths for increasing muscle size. These findings are not surprising as a a large portion of the existing literature has demonstrated that dynamic training through a large range of motion is beneficial when hypertrophy is desired. Additionally, contractions at long muscle lengths tend to produce higher quantities of muscle damage, likely by altering the joint moment arm and increasing mechanical tension when compared to a smaller muscle length. Contractions at longer muscle lengths also result in greater blood flow occlusion, rates of oxygen consumption, and metabolite buildup when compared to smaller muscle lengths. These metabolic factors are well established to contribute to muscular hypertrophy. And if you are someone that's printing that off, laminating it and putting it on your wall, you are my people. There were 23 pieces of research reviewed in this systematic review, which again is very good because it groups together information, it looks at quality, commonalities, and it projects that to you, which is a higher level of evidence-based information to give you than, for example, someone's opinion or just one piece of research. Isometric training at longer muscle lengths produced greater muscular hypertrophy when compared to equal volumes of shorter muscle length training. And so what you do is you take that evidence and you think, is this something that I can include in my sessions? Do I have the time availability to do it? Is it exciting to me? Is it fun to me? Will it actually cause detriment to my training? For example, in the bodybuilding.com nonsense, where the guy is using these isometric hand squeezes between his working sets, could that decrease from your ability to recover between working sets? So is that actually a detriment to your working sets? So can you implement these isometric holds or these overcoming isometrics or these yielding isometrics in a way that your dynamic working sets are not negatively affected, where you're still performing quality repetitions with your regular dynamic work and then you integrate isometrics to contribute and complement them. I think that really is the key. Can you program it to complement your current training? And so should isometrics replace your current dynamic form of training? No. Have to use them? No. Can you use them as another stimulus in your training? Yes. Will you look like a complete Wally in the gym if you do this? Yes. Does the fitness addict look like a complete donut when he uses isometrics on a watermelon, confirmed. I just want to say again, every opportunity I have, a thank you to you. It is all because of you that you have made this channel what it is. It is because of you connecting to what I'm trying to do. It is you having an open mind and understanding that fitness questions and concepts are nuanced and giving discretion to your eyes for staring at this face each week. It's like a freshly polished egg with bad eyesight. And so I just want to thank you for everything you've given to me. For those people that have been here a while, you will understand when I say they're not laughing at us anymore.